So I want to walk you briefly through um, some basic considerations when you want to write a beam time proposal, which is also the exercise of this week. Um, some basic considerations before you actually start. Well, look obviously at all the different neutron sources that you have seen through here. And here's some by now maybe outdated list again. Um, and I mean, firstly, make yourself clear uh, what you want to do and why, just like the questions that came up now, like what is actually the driver for that? Just be clear about that. And check if neutrons are the method of choice actually that also just came up in this questions. <laughs> why you use, why you need neutrons and not X-rays because you could detect uh, the hydrogen inside of metals and discuss your idea with others, either your supervisor or other colleagues and you bounce back and forth ideas and then fine tune your idea for an experiment. And then yeah, check again, this was a very good question actually, check if this is feasible because if you have this very good idea but maybe your sample environment will destroy this very good idea. And estimate how big can the sample size be? So do some rough estimates of how much the sample or the uh, sample environment will attenuate your beam and see what contrast variations you will have um, with different neutrons called or thermal and or, or for different isotopes. And there are some reference that will show after this. Um, so this is just, just serve you as a reference. I will upload these slides after the lecture. There are some useful references to estimate uh, the attenuation of materials. Many of this you will have seen. And this NIST website is useful. Then you can see the different scattering contributions. This is actually based on this paper uh, that is uploaded there by Sears, uh, where you can see the different scattering contributions. And here's a link to the different calculators that you can use, uh, different cross-section calculators. And there is a nice database called X4 and also Janis books. So maybe just try to open these up. They're a bit awkward to use, I would say, but you need to enter the right energy range you're interested in because these databases cover a much bigger range that we are interested in because they're also used for other nuclear applications, uh, these cross sections. And be careful when you look at this type of data, there are usually many data sets in measured at different facilities and there might already be some, some, I mean, maybe not necessarily wrong, but some dubious data sets in there as well. So just a warning, but play around with both these, these, these links. It's quite useful. And then decide if you want to do radiography and need a time series, or do you actually need tomography, or can you design your experiment that it does work in radiography? Also like this question that just came up, you want to study hydrogen or hydrogen embrittlement in metals, can you actually solve the relevant question if you just do radiography? I guess, and, Robin, also there is if you want to do, you do want to do tomography, you have to be 3D and you have to do it fast, then there's really only one place you can do very fast tomography now, I guess, which is the ILL. Yeah, um, exactly. But if you don't need to do such fast 3D tomography, then, then it relaxes your constraint on where you go. It's always worth considering. Yeah, yeah that's a very good point. Um, that's always like you need to kind of in this tune it all together where your requirements and needs are. And do you actually need wavelength resolution uh, or can it be just wide beam? And if you need wavelength resolution, would time of flight work for you? But then you need to consider the spatial resolution that is maybe available there and is that helpful? Um, and this is the wavelength dependency of the attenuation signal again, that you will also find on these uh, websites again in neutron energy here, and you can see this characteristic break edges for iron and aluminum. Um, and yeah, so you should be aware, and then depending on the part of the spectrum or what kind of beamline you use, you get different contrast for these materials. If you are dealing with crystalline materials, these links to X4 and Yanis that I showed, they don't necessarily show really the crystalline structure, these break edges. So you're welcome to download this free tool uh, called NXS plotter that shows um, uh, these uh, break edge spectra basically and all the different contributions. Um, and you can also contact me. There are some more examples that you can load in and it's a small GUI that is easy to use. And you should also consider, is it worse? Like, would you benefit from bimodal neutron and X-ray imaging? And then you should of course pick a beamline that offers this. 
And what is the spatial resolution that you really require? Again, look at the L over D ratios. And then finally, then write a good proposal and convince the reviewers that they should give you beam time. And that's part of the exercise now. And maybe before I also think if the sample may activate, if you know what's in there, again, these NIST calculators can, can give you a quick estimate on what activation you can expect. So do you need your sample back and when? Um, yeah, so that's actually this activation uh, one. And now we are coming to the proposal itself. There's a simple, several administrative things to consider. Go to the website of the facilities. There's this website, neutronsources.org. There's also this International Society for Neutron Radiography that I already mentioned. And typically there are two calls per year. And the panels also, they meet two calls per year to evaluate the proposals. And then start early enough, if you don't have one already, to make a user account and start early enough, especially if you want, for example, to go to Japan. The Japanese websites have some very peculiarities, let's say, and it's better to get in, to go through that process early. And often you need some safety checkups, need online trainings, and, and a lot of these type of things. And just be aware that typically these imaging beamlines are very much oversubscribed by a factor of two or three. I believe the ILL one was even much more oversubscribed in the last runs. So it will be competitive to get to some of the good facilities, maybe apply it more than one facility, for instance, that works for you. And you should really respect the template from the facility and format a, and format a length because the reviewers will get annoyed if that's not the right format, or it may already be rejected on an earlier stage by, by some other instance if you don't uh, adhere to the format that's given. So maybe it will never even reach a reviewer. So some basics of the proposal. It must be scientifically compelling and competitive. So it, you should know what could be done, should be done, and it must be done, and what will be like the highlights, what is the scientific case you will tackle, and would actually neutron imaging give you a result that would really allow to advance your scientific field? And it should be a very targeted proposal. Don't be too vague. It should come out what you want to do and why. And if you have preliminary measurements or characterization, it can be with neutrons, but doesn't have to be, especially if you want to do neutron imaging, it will be very good, maybe sometimes even a prerequisite to already show that you have done X-ray imaging or X-ray tomography. And have a full portfolio uh, of why you need access to this beamline. And as I already said, typically there are lots of proposals, many proposals to review, and reviewers then typically don't have the time to go through extra information that are given in references and avoid typos, as you may, ju may just end up with the wrong pile of proposals if it's very competitive. Uh, even if you have a very good proposal, you should also really try to write it well. And the structure should be important that it's easy to follow and actually make sense that there's not an unknown technical risk that your experiment may fail and then another experiment may be favored. And very important, this came out already uh, yesterday, consult the beamline stuff before and the four of us can play the role of the beamline stuff if you have some questions now in this exercise. Target the measurements based on the beamline, what setup is needed and identify how the experiment can be done there and, and so on. So discuss this. And early enough, as Anders indicated, he's typically swamped with request when, when the proposal deadline is nearing. So if you have an idea just even months before, you can already reach out to the beamline scientists. And you should also get advice on how many days you should request that you have a reasonable request in there. And nicely, if you can present that in some table format, I need this many days for this certain task. The proposal itself, it should have a very strong summary, a clear statement, and the reviewer should be able to understand what the pro proposal is about and the details then given in the following section. Then typically follow some scientific background, set the scene to your research topic. Maybe the reviewers most likely are not experts in your scientific field. It should be easy enough to understand what you are doing and maybe trigger also their interest and indicate some fundamental uh, scientific and societal importance of your work as well is surely helpful. So not too different from like a research paper. And describe any hypothesis that you may want to confirm with your experiment and 
Again, important, which information will the experiment provide? They can only be really obtained by using neutrons. So this is an underlying scheme of your proposal that you really make clear, like I need neutrons and not x-rays for this. Um, there's an awful lot of proposals where it's, where maybe the reviewer doesn't know would it work with x-rays. Maybe to you, it's very obvious that you, you need neutrons, but then maybe just write it out in the sentence why x-rays don't work. Even if it's crystal clear to you, um, it's better to write it. Um, and if you can find enough space, space is of course a challenge in any proposal, but it can be very useful to have a figure as it can replace many words and uh, also show maybe your previous work that you have done. Then the last, nearly the last parts uh, of the proposal are the experimental details. How will you carry out the experiment? And details of, and the quantity of the samples is very important. Typically there are some special fields in the proposal templates to enter this, but at the end, I believe personally it's good to have like a table at the end of the proposal to out highlight what samples you have, what technique will you use and any special requirements. And just really make sure that you are appearing prepared and that not everything is just a rough idea that is not really thought through. So if you can underline that you can surely have, have already the samples prepared or will prepare them, that's, um, useful and make sure the technical feasibility is in place that this is actually technical feasible. If, it, if there's some doubt and it will be brought up in the review panel uh, that it may not, that you haven't contacted the beamline scientist and there's doubt about the feasibility, that's, that's not a good sign and you would be asked to contact the beamline scientist and then advise and then apply again in the next round. And what are the beamline beam time requirements? You should support the choice of this particular beamline. And as I already said, if you can um, show to calculate, give a rough estimate on uh, wh why, how, if you request three days, why do you need three days? I need half a day for setup and the first overnight to do this type of measurement and then another one. And this can be relatively short. So the results and expected significance uh, should be highlighted as well. No, it's not continuing. What are you expecting? Uh, come back a little bit to the summary and close the loop uh, to the end. And at the end, give some references, maybe some important milestones, papers in your field or and or papers that you have published in this field. Um, so that showing that you have already experienced in this and can publish on, on that matter. So don't expect, however, the reviews to, to the reviewers actually to open and read these proposals. So be a bit clever how you put the citation in there. This is now actually going not to the proposal itself, but when you are want to do the experiment and what kind of preparations you should do there. So you can envision if you are, as you've seen in the video, fly out to Japan to do the test, there's many preparations that you should, you can refer back to this um, uh, presentation.